thanks so much for taking time out. I know you're probably, uh, I've been watching your Facebook posts and you're, <laughs> you're very, very busy, aren't you? Yes, I am. But I like staying busy. I, I, I don't like being bored. I have to be busy. So yeah, well, yeah. that's, yeah, it's good to keep doing things in your life and having fun with it. Are you a, are you a full-time musician or do you work a, a job? I'm a full-time musician. Really? You know what? That's pretty rare. <laughs> I got to tell you the truth. That's pretty rare. Uh, yeah, but but don't don't think that money is flying in as easy as you think. <laughs> well, you're, you're not banking major coin. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's, I just make money at my show, pocket money. Yeah. But, I, but, uh, I have a very supportive family, and they're letting me do it and they're not pushing me to like get a job or anything they're saying do what you love and be happy so well that's I'm awesome really happy yeah. yeah that's great you know i was talking to somebody else a couple of weeks ago and they said uh in live music is the only way they can make money in this business you know playing live and uh so yeah, definitely definitely yeah. Yeah. it's it's a weird frontier out there right now i can tell you what I, i've been involved in music for oh well i don't want to say how long because <laughs> <laughs> oh well well I, I just first of all uh were you born and, and raised in ottawa oh yes really i was yes so you're, you're you're keeping your roots there and you're you're definitely grounded there i'm, I'm gonna stay canadian oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna move to the uh, uh ecuadorian uh tropics or nothing like that in no. the near future what was uh you so you've been playing music your whole life what was your defining moment uh, like when you were growing up, when you realized that this is what you wanted to do the rest of your life? Well, when I found out I wanted to do it was I was in this uh, singing competition. And uh, funny story, I cried for two hours because, <laughs> you know, you're young. I think I was 14. And uh, my parents were like, if you don't do it, you're going to regret it. If you do it, you're going to continue. Because if you don't face the fear, it can... It can uh, affect you if you want to pursue it if you haven't done it so I went on stage and I won first place and since then I didn't want to get off stage and I just went for it really yep and you knew that would be it that was it for you huh I felt it in my heart I'm like this is what I have to do but I also love it so much that it keeps me going I really love music. I can't live without it. <laughs> so I need to have my iPod next to me every day because if I need to listen to something, I have the music with me. Like mm -hmm. I need music with me. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. you listen to a lot of different artists, you know, a lot of different genres? I listen to a lot of artists, but I love Green Day. They're my influence. So And Bon Jovi and Billy Idol. I, so, I saw that on yeah. your, I saw that on your bio and I thought, well, you know, Billy Joel, I understand uh, yeah. from Green Day. I understand that, but Billy Idol, now that's interesting. What I, what is it about him? Is it his uh, is it his stage presence or his songwriting or? <laughs> Honestly, his looks. <laughs> can, can you do the lip sneer? Can you do the lip sneer? <laughs> if I use my fingers to help me with my lips, but <laughs> no. But I've, I've seen him live, and um, it's unbelievable on stage how awesome he performs. Like, for the first time I saw him, I'm like, please don't be full. I want to buy tickets. And I saw him, and I was right in front of him, and I was watching his every move just to learn from him. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. Really? And he's so fit. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Even yeah. nowadays, he's like the new. He's like the new Iggy Pop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I, I've I've <laughs> always admired uh, Billy. I, I I love his guitar player Steve Stevens. I just oh, he was amazing. Yeah, I could not believe it. I was like, wow. I saw like, a uh, I saw a building in in uh, downtown. It was in Manhattan. We were mm -hmm. around uh, Can Max's Kansas City and. Uh, Somebody had scrawled Steve Stevens as God on the wall. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of uh, influences, Billy Idol. I mean, uh, Billy Joe from Green Day. Uh, man, what a great songwriter this guy is. That That's what got me into Green Day, actually. 
the way he wrote his songs. And the best thing I like about Green Day is Billy writes the songs, right? Right. And then he lets the so- the the other bandmates have credit because they're his band. But it's amazing the stories that he write about, and that's where I got my my songwriting from. Really, more I got more into songwriting after hearing Green Day because I started to hear what he was writing about when he was younger. He was writing about relationships, so I was writing about relationships. Ah. so that's where I got my like relationship kind of feel in my songs. If I were talking about relationships, but Green Day is more. The songwriting, the, he writes a story, and it's amazing how where where he gets it from. Yeah, it's just amazing. And yeah. he constantly puts it out. I, I love the way he structures, and I love the yeah. way he uses words. I mean, it's so effective. A lot of people would debate on whether well, it might be too simple or it might be too uh, uh, repetitious. But I don't agree, and I think he's got a great handle on on his songwriting. The thing about being simple is people can memorize the songs faster with them. When songs are very, like, if I want, I wanted to learn a Bon Jovi song and I loved it, but the lyrics were so complicated for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Bon Jovi, it's your song, I get it. But, like, yeah. if I want to learn it quickly and go on stage, I was struggling. Uh-huh. But maybe it, that song wasn't for me. Maybe that wasn't a fit for me anyway. Right. But, I can sing any Green Day song and like and like play with it because they're easy and they're power chords and I can easily get get to it. But yeah. but now his songs have different chords and they're getting harder. Well, that... But 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 the lyrics are still simple. Yeah. But but you know what they have to grow and I love it when bands grow and they show a new side because it shows that there, there is more to them. Yeah, so. and they kind of evolved, but they still remained Green Day. I, I thought American, yeah. I-, I thought American Idiot was like a, a master stroke, you know. Was, American Idiot yeah. is what got me into rock music. Is it really? Yeah. yeah when, when I heard that album, I'm like, you know what? This is it. This is the style I want to be a rock artist, and I use that that sound for. I, I actually used. Um, uh what's her name that song idea for my stuck up song that's on my record oh is that right but it it was the idea i wanted to have that feel of it on that and some people are saying they're they're hearing billy idol and green day so it's good it's good my influences that's awesome uh, have you ever i didn't but I didn't want to sound exactly like that record. Right. I just wanted the feel. Of right. Me, so. Yeah, and you don't see, you don't, you don't get a lot of songwriters that you can emulate and and do so quickly. Uh, have you ever played in in a cover band? Not not in a cover band. Really? So you've always just done your stuff. Oh, well, as a cover band, I mean not just covers. Yeah. A uh, mixed. Uh huh. Yeah, I nice. play originals and covers. I have been with a band, but you know, they they want to go their own way. I want to go my own way, but uh, that's why I'm solo. Oh, but, is that right? But I've I've done it all myself pretty much my entire life, and I kind of enjoy it that way. If somebody wants to come in, they gotta follow my speed <laughs> because I'm a fast learner, and I have a I have a goal, and they have to want that goal, too. Right. If they don't want it, they're going to hold me back. Actually, somebody in the business told me, if you if you make a band or play with somebody, if they don't have the same goal as you, they're going to hold you back. So make sure they want the same thing as you so you guys help each other to get it. So right. you, yeah. you have to be around people who want it as much as you. Uh, yeah, or, I, or or can help you in the right direction. So and, and the chemistry has to be there; otherwise, it's not worth doing. Definitely, that's number one. Actually, yeah, <laughs> you guys have to be able to sit together for for five minutes and not be like awkward <laughs> or what you know, like fight over. Right. Oh yeah, that has never happened to me yet. So I'm real. I'm really happy. You're fortunate there, yeah. But it doesn't mean it won't happen. But. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sure you got plans in the future to go out live, right? 
Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I, your first, if I'm, if I understand this correctly, your first recording in England. So you traveled over there and recorded. I got the opportunity out of the blue. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. And I was actually in college, and uh, I think that was in 2010, maybe. That was a while ago. Right. And then, uh, but I went to England in 2011 and recorded it. But what happened was I was in class, in my producer's class, and um, we were we were Skyping with producers. So that day we were talking to Stuart Epps. And um, I was in the side of the classroom. I didn't know the, the camera was facing at me. I didn't know that Stuart could even see me because I was I, I was sitting where I thought that the, the angle of the computer was it on me. <laughs> so every time he asked a question like who plays an instrument, who writes, who is a singer, who is a musician, I always raised my hand. So out of the blue, he asked my teacher, "Can I speak to the girl in the front row?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Which girl?" <laughs> and and then. <laughs> Stewart's just like that, girl, and then Stewart's like that girl there, and even my teacher didn't know because I was in the corner. He didn't think he could see me, and all of a sudden I started freaking out. I'm like, there's 30 to 40 people in my class, and like, oh my gosh, he just asked me to talk to him. Oops. <laughs> no, no, you know I'm young in college, going like. Is this my break or something? Like I'm just, is this, I'm, I, what's happening? Yeah. And then we, we talked, and then he asked my teacher to give me his email. And then a year later, I went to England and made a record. Awesome. The exact way I wanted it. He 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 obviously knew because when he heard the songs I was working on, he's like, "You want old school Green Day, right?" I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. So was that your first experience in a studio? No. No. But that was my first experience being with um, a, a big producer like that, who was actually in deep in the business, and I learned a lot from him. And every producer I have worked with have been so kind, and, and they have helped me, and just so loving <laughs> yeah well, that, that's, yeah. that's cool and that helps an artist out a lot uh and i noticed and then you moved to uh you recorded in nashville uh this this is your latest recording in nashville yes i recorded five songs in nashville and uh, i worked with a couple songwriters we wrote 10 songs wow we chose five i worked with kent wells in the studio to to pick the five songs and uh, and then we worked on the on the key keys for the songs in case the songs were too high or too low to do the structures the arrangements and actually the band he brought in for me because he asked me what sound what feel what sound are you looking for so i gave him some ideas oh my gosh <laughs> when i heard the band he brought in and they're all from different bands they he just put a band together unbelievable <laughs> i was like really finally that that sound i wanted because every album i make i want to have a sound that i hear in my mind right, right. i couldn't believe it really? it was like right in front of me yeah i Man. there was not one thing i told them that i didn't like i loved every single thing that i was hearing in the studio it was amazing well, it sounds great. Uh, I, do you have any interest in, in working the knobs, you know, on the board? And, and oh, gosh, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, but I do like that after uh, every time I did record my vocals, Kent would bring me into the mixing room and let me hear it, how, how it sounds where he's sitting, because he wants me to see if I even like it in the mixing board. So uh, Right, right. The, the way it's going to sound after he mixes to make sure everything flows. I really liked it every time he asked me to come in and hear it because that shows involvement. He wants me to be involved. And an artist should always be involved in their, 
in oh. their project. Oh, so. definitely. And, and that's a sign of a good producer is when he could just yeah. not tell you what to do, but bring out the best in you, I guess, is how it would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, <clears throat> very kind. And uh, also, I liked in the studio, uh, sometimes they had food lying around oh. for snacks. So after I say, <laughs> oh, look, a piece of chocolate, <laughs> nobody will know. <laughs> no, no, it's there for the people working there or walking by you you can grab it they don't care as long as you're there you're fine right. but it's amazing how many doors they had <laughs> to for the the sound to be out of the room yeah oh my god these big thick doors they were so hard to open and close them so i had to like pull it and i'm like i can't pull this thing but i don't know it's I'd, all I... to keep the sound out of the room and secure I, I would get kind of claustrophobic in, an, in those ISO booths because they're, they're pretty tiny, you know. Well, the, yeah, the first one I used was to do a sound check with the band. So um, pretty much the band was recording the track and I was just singing just to follow the band. So they, they record their part. I was in a very small booth. But when I did the final recording to really put it on the record... I was in a bigger room, so but they always like to light candles next to me. <laughs> That's nice. Because, because they say that the musicians like candles. Yeah. But I told them I don't like candles. I don't like fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind turning them off? <laughs> but what I did is I didn't want to. I said, okay, you don't have to turn it off. I just won't look at it. I found it kind of cute. Yeah. It's supposed to make you feel relaxed. Yeah. But honestly, I don't like candles. If there's a candle in my house, I will watch it to make sure nothing happens. Right? Yes. I'm just afraid of things to happen. Yeah. So, uh, but I guess a lot of musicians like to have candles in the booth when they're singing. Huh. And the lights, Interesting. Are, lights are down low. Um, the lights were not dim because I, I wear glasses and I won't be able to see very nah. well. Or more contacts. But... Uh, I know I don't want I want to be able to see what I'm doing but but the cool thing that I couldn't do in in the other studios I was in but I could do in Nashville was I had my own volume board so if I wanted more mic on my end I could put the volume up for my mic and my headset well that's nice so Kent is like you have your own control right. so I like that so uh -huh. if I couldn't hear my 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 voice i can raise it but that doesn't affect the recording right it just puts it more in my headset so more more. i like that i had the control uh -huh. so it, it was cool i didn't know they were doing that because i've never had that experience so when i got to that i'm like yes because i like to hear my voice <laughs> yeah more <laughs> definitely Speaking about recording, and you know, I, I don't want to dive too far into the industry mechanics of stuff, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's such a crazy world nowadays where you don't know what you don't know if you should release CDs, you do release downloads only. Oh yeah, what's the best way to distribute? Do you go with a label? Do you not go with a label? What uh, what what kind of leads you through the jungle? Honestly. I'm going to talk from my opinion. I would love to have a label because that's my dream. Uh -huh. But um, some people go independent the whole route. But I'm trying to get to a label. Right. A good label. Right. A label that believes in me and that will help push my music out. And that's, that's, but, that's the big thing about a label is established labels. They can distribute your music they can they have influence with radio stations yes. and and uh, physical outlets and that's the big advantage the only downfall i would think and this is my personal opinion but they say well you know we'll sign you to a contract but you need three hits off of this and so we're going to give you a producer and he's going to make you sound like this yes and that's a that's a hard trade off that's with every label <laughs> yeah um well the thing is hopefully for for me they see that this is my my. I, as long as I'm rock, I'll be okay with what they do. Really? Because when I was in Nashville, they wouldn't record a song if it wasn't gonna be a hit. So I was still around that, 
and I was lucky the songs I wanted on the record got on the record. I had to fight for some of the songs to get on the record. So, really? Yeah. Wow. But uh, but the ones I really wanted got on. Like Kiss is a Killer was the first one I wanted, and it got on the record because everybody loved it and knew it was going to be a hit. Right on. So yeah. I, I'm happy that everything went flowed well. But about the CDs and stuff, I think it, they should do it with the records and digital. I still like to go to a store and buy a CD. I don't want to get a Green Day off of you, iTunes. I want to go buy their record. I want to collect their CDs and their yeah. shirts and it's the whole and touchy simple feeling. Plan and yeah. all that. What do yeah. you think about vinyl then? Oh, vinyls! I would love to have my songs on my songs on vinyl, yeah. but it's very expensive. Very expensive. But uh, if you're a big band like Green Day, they can afford it, right. and people are gonna buy it because it's Green Day. Right. Right. They're gonna say I, and it doesn't mean they have the player for it. They just want the vinyl because they want to collect it, like the all Green Day fans, right? Right. Like I collect everything of Green Day, just because I want it. It's not. It's not because I'm gonna use them. I have so many things. I say, oh, I got this jewelry. I got this a uh, patch, uh, socks. I'm not gonna wear it and get it all wrecked. I, I have Green Day socks, and I don't want to wear it to, to wreck it. I keep it as, as a souvenir, you know, like on the side. So. Well, there's something very cool about buying a, a, a vinyl, an album, and while you're listening to it, you could look at the pictures, you could look at the artwork, you could look at the credits. You know, it's something you could actually physically have in your hand. And I, I don't Definitely. Know, I'm being a little bit romantic about that, but I thought that was the coolest thing about vinyl, and uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it make a comeback, to tell you the truth. I think it is coming back. Yeah. Well, yeah, I noticed a lot of uh, turntable sales on uh, yeah. on uh, websites and stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. So moving on, uh, we were talking about playing live. And so you got plans to play out live. Are you going to hire a band or are you going to recruit members or how are you going to handle that? If I have a very important show... That I need a band, I have to hire session players. And then they learn your music in a day because they're so experienced. Uh-huh. That they don't even need a rehearsal. That's, that makes sense. But but that's if I get the real, like, expensive ones, like the real. And, to, and sometimes you can't afford that all the time. So I don't normally do that unless I have a show that I really need good players. But other than that... I just have to find people that can play with me, or I go alone. Uh huh. You do a lot of acoustic stuff then. I do acoustic when I'm alone, yeah. But I would love to play electric, but it's better with a band because electric right. are on its own. I, I think when people are listening, it's going to be too much noise. Ah. Too much of that feedback for them. Acoustic, it's 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 uh, softer, but it's not soft. But like it's not like that loud music you're hearing all the time. It's gonna be changing up and down the feel. So right. Well, and it creates a lot of texture too when you can do both. Uh, I was watching your video. Was it hurt? Yes. That was beautiful. Beautiful stuff. I Thank feel... you. And Kent is playing in the background. The oh, producer. Is, it, is that him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, do you often put your your you lay your feelings out bare like that? Is that is that something you normally <laughs> do or? Was this a one-off thing? That's funny. <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, so that song is very painful, huh? You notice? Yeah. Yeah, um, actually, no, I don't normally put it that obviously. But I do put my feelings in a song. But uh -huh. I was so hurt at that time in my life when I wrote it. It took me a while to write it because when I was going through that pain in my life, I couldn't write it because I wasn't ready. But when I got to Nashville, I'm like, I'm ready really? to write it. Because really? if I'm not ready, then I can't sing it. Right. And my songwriter that I wrote it with, he thought of the music. And I just had the lyrics in mind. And it's amazing. He just helped me just to make the, the lyrics a bit stronger. Not to be too simple, uh -huh. but a bit stronger. Right. But, and... Um, but 
and he uh, and he was very smart. He said, "Don't put he or her, uh, um, him or her in the song. Don't specify who the song's about." Really, just kind of yeah. generically. Because you, because he said you don't want people to start thinking, is it who, which girl or which guy? <laughs> you want the song to relate, right, to everybody. I think Taylor, Taylor Swift made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> She's singing about her ex-boyfriend. Uh, a little too personal, I think. I, I guess she writes like me. Yeah. About feelings that we go through. Because honestly, I, I actually like some of her songs. They're really good. Yeah. Uh, but you don't know. It might it might be her um, her for, her format. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe that's what she uses, maybe, and that's what gets it for her. Maybe, but you know what? It works for her. So. <laughs> maybe she was just pissed. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, you know what? I'm curious to see what she has next. Yeah, she's working on her next record. Man, she is a she's an industry all unto herself. Yeah. Man, it's pretty amazing what she's built. Uh, Actually, she did it all by herself too. Yeah, she did. You got to give so her props she, for that. So um, yeah, she worked very hard, but um, yeah, but you know, it's not everybody that can get up to her level. So she she really worked to get to where she is. So definitely. But about the hurt song, yes, I, I w- it was this, that song is about a friend who was never there for you and all they cared about was themselves. Hmm. Like it was just like it's not gonna work anymore. Like yeah. I'm like. Do you but, get uh, do you get emotional when you sing it or are you past that? Um. I think I'm past that. It's just when I sing it, I try to remember the time that I wrote it, so I put the feel in the song. Right. Huh. But other than that, oh, I can talk about it. It doesn't hurt me anymore. And does that person know it's about her? Oops. <laughs> 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 Oopsie doopsie. Yeah, well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. It, it, it was going to happen anyway. <laughs> I'm trying my best to hide it, and it comes out. Anyway, but um, it doesn't matter. If she even knows it's about her, who knows? She might not even think it's about her. But Yeah. But the song is not mean. No. It's just saying that I was hurt and that's why I had to walk. It's I'm not saying she's a mean person. And, and she wasn't. It's just it, the relationship, the friendship wasn't, wasn't working anymore. That's all. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a good song, and I, uh, you know, it obviously emotionally uh, attached to it. So that's that's, and I think that's uh, that's the most important thing about making music. The emotional attachment has to be there. What did you think about my Paradise song? I loved it. I I haven't heard a bad piece yet, to tell you the truth. And I'm uh, I'm not try- I'm not trying to earn brownie points here, but you know, I get a lot of submissions here at the radio station, and. Uh, uh, there's a few that I can listen to everything. Oh, yeah, and yeah. all have valid points. So, yeah, I just, uh, I there's not a bad song there. Actually, you know, the song I would pick for a hit single would be All or Nothing. Off my, my yeah, that was the hit single on the first record. Yeah, very, yeah. very radio and, friendly and that, song. And that, that was funny because I liked One Chance so much. Okay, that was the second single. But All or Nothing, Stuart F is like, you know All or Nothing is the hit, right? I'm like, I know, but I love One Chance. (laughs) Because One Chance was more Green Day feel to it. That's why. It was Uh, fun and upbeat. But uh, you know what? All my songs are fun. Yeah, that's cool. So do you have any, uh, you got any future plans for going back into the studio? Um, Oh, definitely. When? I don't know. Um. I'm, t- I'm still debating on the idea for the next record. Uh-huh. Um, I'm hoping my next record, I can record more than five songs, hopefully add a few more tracks onto it. Um, I have an idea, but it's like, do I want to stick to that? I have the tendency to go back and forth with ideas. and But I would definitely love to go back to Nashville and work with the same team again. It was such a wonderful experience. So. Really, uh, ha- I really, I really had fun there. the The music scene, the people, amazing. Is really, there, really nice. Is there a studio in Ottawa that you could utilize, or 
just that's not in the cards. Um. Well, how, 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 say this. <laughs> how 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 is the music scene in uh, Ontario there in Ottawa? Ottawa, um, is it pretty healthy or? It's small. It's small. Toronto has a bigger scene. I see. That's why I went from Ottawa to Toronto to go into the bigger scene. Oh. But it's good. But it's a small scene. Ah. But 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 because it's so small, everybody knows each other. Right. Pretty much, and 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 it's a good thing because you can network and work with each other. Right. But um, I have a couple I of like other. I, I have a couple other of, bands from Ottawa. Yeah. So, I, that's why I was I was curious as you know as, oh. as what the music scene was like up there. Uh, seems like a yeah, lot. Of, it's it, it's nice. It's comfy, but because I I, I played so much in Ottawa, I'm like I want to get out and. Go ah, somewhere else. Right, right. So when I went to Toronto, I'm like, whoa. Huh. Now, this is a big scene. Now, where do I start? <laughs> so I just started doing little open mics, and then I met people, and then I went from there. Because I just, I, I had to find my, my way to fit in, you know? It's uh-huh. so big. Right. So, but Ottawa, everybody's so welcoming. You can go anywhere, and they're so nice to you. This, It's you. so nice here, but... You really Toronto, like if you want to go and meet, like go to a bigger scene, you go to uh, Toronto. But I think Canada scene is very welcoming. Uh, Canadian musicians are very kind and welcoming. So and and we love all music. So not just Rush. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> not just Rush. <laughs> I just got done watching a documentary about them, and uh, it was yeah. kind of funny how. Is it true that they're that they they're over or something? Like they stopped touring, or yeah, they uh, drummer Neil Peart uh, pretty much said, "I'm done doing that." If you guys want to do the studio thing, he wouldn't mind, but uh, he's done touring. Yeah, he must be tired. <laughs> All right, Sabrina Falla joining us on the uh, phone here, and I'm all tangled up in my chair. Uh, what contact information information will wrap it up with this? Uh, what's the best way to hear your music? What's the best way to get a hold of you and such like that? Okay, so they can go to my website, sabrinafalla.com. Okay. And on the top of the page, there's my YouTube, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook. You can follow me there. And I talk to everybody. I love to make new friends and meet new people awesome. and i also have a snapchat it's sabrina underscore foul if you have a snapchat hit me up i love to snap random things and chat on there it's fun it's really fun yeah and um yeah and you can also contact me from my website in my contact section if you want to send me an email go right ahead Cool. And I love chatting with people. And so. and we can download your music uh directly on from, iTunes. On iTunes. On iTunes. Yeah, it's right. on my website. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that uh, we get that straight. Did you have any I'm also I'm also on Spotify and Amazon on other sites too. Oh, is that right? So, yeah. Typical download stuff. Amazon, uh uh awesome. Any fi- any physical copies available? Like do you send out CDs or um not really. I don't. I I do that normally by uh, if they want to buy it from me, I can do that. Right. But I normally do it at my shows. I see. But online, uh, just download. They can only. get it on iTunes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome, Sabrina. Thanks so much for taking time out. I know you're busy, and uh, I really appreciate it. It was a fascinating conversation, and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna spin a couple of your songs right now. Kisses a killer, and uh, the other one, All or Nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll we'll leave it at that. And uh, once again, thanks so much. I I'd really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I, I I really really enjoyed this conversation that we had tonight. It it was fun. It was uh, interesting too. Well, come down to the states sometime. We'd love to see you live. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely go back to the states and do some more shows there. All right. Yeah. Here's Sabrina Fall. A kiss is a kill.